Hello everybody, JT Bear. It's a little bit of a rainy day today just outside my aquaponic greenhouse, but I tell you, pretty nice inside. I just thought I'd give everybody kind of a rundown and uh, do a for the record on what the point and purpose of this whole no power aquaponic garden is, uh, what I'm trying to achieve, you know, basically why I'm doing it, and uh, some of the known obstacles that are going to be in my way here. For those of you who haven't seen it yet, I'll also show you how this currently works. It's not very difficult, I'm happy to show anybody, and uh, if you have any further questions, don't hesitate to ask, that's what the comment section is for. Alright, so down here you can see where I've got my fish tank here. I've got a couple of good, mature goldfish in the back here. These guys are probably about three years old, very, very well established fish. And uh, this white pipe that you see coming down is effectively just a drain from uh, this drip tray right up here. All of these Folgers cans that you see in my no-power aquaponic garden, doesn't have to be Folgers, you can use any plastic container you want, but they've all got quarter inch holes drilled down into the bottom in which I've inserted some standard airline tubing like you would find in an aquarium supply area. And as you can see, all these containers are just resting across my drip area, just sitting on 2x4s, 2x8s, whatever I had handy. All I do to water this is I take good old fashioned juice jug, fill it up from the tank, and then I just pour it into the containers, one by one by one. And I repeat the process until all of the plants have been watered. What happens then is the water filters through the clay pellets and the rocks and stones and whatever else I have stuffed in these various containers, comes out the airline hose and drains into my reservoir beneath. As you can see, the reservoir is filled with more of the clay pellets, so it gets a lot of filtration as it goes through here. And then at the very end, underneath other containers, I have the remains of the drain from when this was a flood and drain bed. So basically, all that's in there now is a very short piece of standpipe to leave about an inch and a half of water in the bottom of my drain tray at all times, which has allowed me to throw some duckweed on there. Now, you might be asking yourself, why go through all of this when I have electricity and I know that using that works? Well, I do have my reasons. I have my reasons for everything, and uh, this is no different. I have a couple of friends who want to go live up in the mountain, and they would like to have an aquaponic garden. So for them to do that, it needs to use little to no electricity. They are going to have a couple of solar panels and they're hoping to set up some windmills, but until then, they need a no power aquaponic garden so that they can raise their fish and that they can raise their vegetables and have proper nutrition. And let's face it, these guys are my friends, so I want, this, I want them to succeed because I don't want to have to go rescue them and nurse them back to health. In addition to that, I have my own goals regarding property and I'd like to uh, get onto it as soon as possible. Now in order for me to make use of that property that's most likely not going to have electricity when I first get to it, I'm going to need some sort of no power aquaponic garden. I've gotten quite used to having a steady supply of mints and various herbs, I've gotten quite used to having kale on hand, and I am not prepared to go without these things. Okay, so that takes care of why am I doing it. The next question, I guess, is what do I hope to achieve? Well, I hope to have a fully functional aquaponic garden that uses zero to no electricity. That would be the obvious goal out of this. I would like to find out which herbs and vegetables will do best in a no power system so that other people getting interested in aquaponics and getting started in aquaponics have that edge up. I know I've, uh, I've learned a lot in my learning curve over the years and uh, I very much appreciate the things that I can learn on other people's YouTube channels without having to make those mistakes myself. That's part of why I share my mistakes. I suppose the last thing I'm hoping to achieve with all this is really I've got a lot of people that are telling me they can't afford the electricity or there's no electricity where they are otherwise they would just love to start an aquaponic garden. So I guess I'm trying to prove to the world 
that there really is no excuse. If you've got a container for your plants and a container for your fish, you're pretty much good to go. Everybody's got a juice jug. If you don't have a juice jug, cut open a milk jug. Use it, pour your water, it will work. There's no excuse. I'm proving that and I'm getting further into proving that, so that is part of the goal. That is the final goal. So really, all that's left to share for this particular on the record video is the known obstacles. And like I said before, if I don't mention something that you know for a fact is going to be a problem for me, throw it in the comments. I love the comments. Okay, first known obstacle. Obviously, there's going to be nowhere near as much dissolved oxygen in a no power system as in a system with a pump or an air stone or anything like that. So something needs to be done to to help with that, basically. Whether it is uh, providing additional drainage tiers so that the water splashes several times before getting back and uh, it has a chance to get to its proper level that way. Or, I, I don't really know yet, but I do have some design ideas. So obviously dissolved oxygen, that's going to be one of my big ones. Another big known obstacle is going to be the biofiltration process. Clearly with the water not running anywhere near as regularly through the filtration media, and there is still the media in here, right? Like those clay pellets are still there. There's still room for the biofiltration. It's just not happening as often. So I'm going to have build-ups of things that uh, wouldn't really show up in a traditional aquaponic garden with a pump and with an airstone and the yada 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 that we all know it's just plain better to have. I think the last obstacle that I know for sure I'm going to have to deal with is water temperature in the winter time. Now I've got goldfish in here and these guys are really really sturdy like I've already said quite a few times. These particular fish have already been in a frozen tank. It froze oh probably a good inch and a half to two inches over. I totally panicked and I'm breaking the ice open and shocks is you know a little panic too and we got in there and the fish are looking at me like yeah we're fine you know we don't care. So. Excellent, I got really lucky with that. If I was trying to do this with an edible fish, water temperature would be a big issue. So, again, that's part of why I don't raise tilapia and things like that in my main aquaponic system, because living in Canada, trying to keep it as low budget as possible, I just, I don't have the money for the heating. It's that simple. But with the no power aquaponics, it's not even an option. Well, there you have it, everybody. It's a brief, on-the-record kind of rundown of the aquaponic system. Hopefully, I've covered how it works. Hopefully, I've covered why I'm doing it. Hopefully, I've covered what I'm trying to achieve and what is in my way. If you have any more questions about any of this process or anything else going on in my garden, for that matter, don't hesitate to use the comments below. And hey, you know, while you're at it, have a great day.